Hello, McFluffy52 here, back with some more Phyrexia All Will Be One action, and today I have a deck that I like to call Grease Fire because we're playing tons of, actually, basically, strictly all new cards from Phyrexia All Will Be One, and that uh, those cards have tons of oil counter synergies. We're playing a very low to the ground deck. We have 20 lands here, uh, a slew of 16 one drop creatures, as well as uh, eight other one drops here got eight uh two drops and then eight three drops so we're hoping to curve out really fast we'll get into some games there will be a full deck tech at the end of the video we'll go through it but also we'll explain the cards as we come across them if you're looking for some more frexia all will be one action make sure to subscribe uh because i plan to come out with more decks uh as we explore and try out and test out new cards and see what we can do with them Today we're going to see if we can rank up though with this quite an aggro deck. Let's see. Uh, okay, this is nice because we have three lands and like the blood contaminator, but it's too slow, honestly. I think. I think it might be too slow, depending on what our opponent is doing. There is a really cool tech here though. I'll say this deck can outpace uh, mono red. And can counter mono red in the sense that we have access to a sweeper here the filigree silex uh, which is really nice our opponent is playing black here i think we're going to go ahead do we want to play out the canker bloom it still gets got by no we'll go ahead and play this filigree silex tap out this turn they can't they can't uh cut it down because it has this has five power and toughness so it seems like a bit of a waste to go for that our turn that automatically puts an oil counter on another target artifact or creature. I think what we're going to do here, we'd love to develop our board with an Urbrass Forge. Uh, so I think I might go ahead and do that. Or, you know what, we'll play Blood Contaminator so they have to answer that. We have um, some of the new untapped lands here as well. We could blow up the Reckoner Bankbuster with our Filigree Silex here. That is an option. But I think I'm going to keep it as a potential damage option. Because the Filigree Silex, we can tap it to add an oil counter. And then we can tap it to sacrifice it. And destroy an online permanence with mana value equal to the number of oil counters on it. And then we can remove 10 or more oil counters from it. Uh, or when we remove 10 oil counters from it, and or from permanence we control, uh, the opponent takes 10 damage to the face. Well, that's usually where, where we'll be sending it. Um, I will say this deck is also really good against control because, well, we have the Filigree Silex, which can ramp up and do 10 damage to the face to help finish off control matches, as well as Urbrass Forge. This card is crazy good in a situation like this. Our opponent here, being able to swing into our face is not ideal, but honestly, we don't care. They tap down their, their Gix. So we're, we're ready to just go ham. Their opponent, if they're playing the flying creature here, we're going to have a bit of a problem. It was a non-land card, mana value 2 or less. That is really bad for us because all of our deck is basically mana value 2 or less. Besides the Urbrest Forge and Failigree Silex. So we'll have to see if our, our Silex and Forge can finish our off our opponent here. Um, go ahead, put a counter on the forge. We want the counters on the forge because what the forge does is, well, hey, it goes like this, and then it creates uh, a hasted creature that sacrifices at the end of the turn, um, equal to the number, or power and toughness, e or the power equal to the number of oil counters on it. And you add an oil counter at the beginning of each combat step. Let's haste and trample our opponent here. Doing quite well for themselves. Uh, hopefully they don't have a way to haste in their, their creature here. I'm not entirely sure if we really care what the opponent does here. Yeah, you didn't want to draw that card, sir. I'm not going to lie. You did not want to draw that card. Because I think we just have the win here. Because we swing in for 5 damage. If they don't block it, they die. Uh, so that's up to them. You can also pump it with a free to from flesh. Does our opponent choose to block? 
They block with the 4-4 four four here. I don't know if that's enough. Um, if we pump this here, it gets it plus 2, plus 2, which gives it 3 damage to the face. It's not quite enough. And then we can remove the oil counters from it and the filigree silex. I don't think we want to... I don't think we want to worry about it. We'll go ahead and let them punt their bank buster. We'll add another counter to the filigree silex. Keep that thing ticking up. Oh, we'll play Vindictive Flame Stoker here. Vindictive Flame Stoker, really nice because it can help refill our hand when we end up uh, emptying it like we have. My opponent's probably going to attack in with both of these things. Fine with us. Uh, we can actually block here. Because we have the free from flesh, which can pump up this. We cast it on a, uh, a non-creature spell, so it also gets an additional oil counter. Free from flesh gives it plus two, plus two. Our opponent here, Herxian Flesh Gorger, do we think it's enough? Time to find out. Um, we could sack this. So I'm gonna try to think here. We get four damage through, then they heal some. So we just still don't have enough damage here. I don't think. Um. Huh. Well, they they have to block with their flesh gorger, so they're going down some healing. Oh wait, no, what? Opponent. Uh, opponent. I'm not sure they know how this works, but they're about to find out. Because we just do this, boom, 10 damage to the face. That's why this deck is so good. We don't even need any creatures. They can remove them all. Who cares? We can chomp with them. <clears throat> and then we just keep steamrolling. We're forging our way to uh, Mythic here, if you will. The Forge and the Silex. Man, I thought the Silex was kind of jank. Like, oh, it's, it's just a jank win con, but I threw it in here because I was like, hmm, yeah, well, I just threw this deck together, and then I played it, and it kept winning, and I was like, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. We're going against Mir here. That is a cool name. I respect it. All right, we got the exuberant fusling here. I'm trying to figure, figure out, like, the, the main thing with this deck is a little bit of sequencing. Your sequencing does matter in some situations. Okay, we'll play the Evolving Adaptive, because then we can play Vindictive Flamestoker and pump it. Uh, we can play Vindictive Flamestoker and then nothing else, because we unfortunately drew into a forest. Play this Copperline Gorge while it's untapped. Um, <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately this is all we can do. Next turn, we'll be able to unload a good portion of our hand. Probably play the Exuberant Fusling and, uh, and our Churning Reservoir. This card mostly just exists to be dropped on like turn one, turn two, uh, and put oil counters on things. Can't put an oil counter on itself. That is a big downside here. Uh, and then if something dies with oil counters, you have the chance to create a little 1-1. One -one. Which is nice. Opponent here has quite the nice set of creatures. Three toughness is quite a pain in the rear to get through. Um, we can play this. This pumps up our evolving adaptive, and then we can play the churning reservoir. Though we do get them. Ah, crap. Okay, maybe we just go and swing in here. They're playing Ledger Shredder, which is a big problem for us. They're probably playing. The Simic Toxic deck, they just didn't draw into any of them. Ledger Shredder is a really good answer to us because, well, Ledger Shredder says whenever you cast your second spell, it connives. Connives says they draw a card and then they discard a card. If they discard a non-land card, you put a counter on that creature. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've seen that card in a millennia. Or like ever, really. Tanker Bloom, they're tapping down our Tanker Bloom. Or Serum Snaring or Evolving Adaptive. I don't know if we really make our way through this one. Strange deck, but it's working. Oh, you're like a 
Tekathal um, tempo deck. Interesting. Tekathal just says proliferate and then proliferate again. Or, or like when if you proliferate, proliferate twice instead. Uh, so it did get us here. My goodness. I think we're dead. I don't think there's much we can do because if we play a bunch of creatures here while well, they just connive and then we're we're in we're not in the sauce. Well I think our our most optimal plan is to just dump a bunch of creatures this turn. We can empty our hand and uh hope it's good enough. Yeah, they get to connive here, but uh they don't get connive on these spells. They probably just kill us. Uh, opponent had quite the nut draw with double letter shredder. Uh, so. I stand corrected. They were not playing the, uh, the fancy poison deck. That is a nice deck that they're playing. A nice deck. Unfortunately, we do not have a ton of counters on our Vindictive Flame Stoker here. Vindictive Flame Stoker is usually something more that you're you're using later in the game, uh, so not the end of the world. Yep, tap down our stuff. It doesn't untap until next turn. Yeah, I don't know if there's a good way to fight through this. Oh no, you're just gonna. Oh, okay, fair enough. It is a 3-5, so it is pretty good at blocking us. Um, I think that just concludes this fight. <laughs> and we top deck a forest in, or a car, yeah, a car why can't I pronounce it? I've heard people say it before. You know what, we take out Tamiyo for vengeance. Uh, go ahead, two damage. And then we concede. Can't win them all. See that we've gone on a bit of a win streak here, but sometimes uh, they just have a, a better start. See if we can find a new opponent. I'm trying to think like, what are the good matchups for this deck? Well, basically, yeah, if you really don't develop the board in the first, like, two turns, you're definitely going to get swamped in most situations. This hand is awful. Might need some tapped dual lands in here. What are we happier to see? Bloated Contaminator, Canker Bloom, Filigree Silic. We'll keep this. What's the chance that we just draw lands for, like while you know well we're gonna be the deck that doesn't develop our board for several turns and that's that's probably not gonna win us this game so we get to get fillery silex ticking which is something doubt our opponent is playing any one drops we haven't one in hand the problem are these legendaries so you can't exactly just go ham with them um we're gonna test whether or not they want to counter stuff and just play kinker boom because we want this forge resolved. If this forge resolves, you start popping off. You can see that they have some hesitation here. Pass the turn. <clears throat> Opponent playing Bant so far. Wonder what they're up to. Okay, we have a second forge here, so maybe we go ahead. You know what? Let's just fight Canker Bloom. Uh, or we can go ahead and swing in. Oh, if we're going to play a forge, you want to play it before combat step. I uh, will play Kanker Bloom. My opponent is probably just holding up a bunch of sweepers, maybe? Or, they're probably all holding up counter spells, but... Go ahead, take up the Filigree Silex. If they're playing Planeswalkers and they're playing Broker's Ascendancy, there might be something to keeping this on three. Fateful Absence. Yep, that will kill it regardless of what happens. So in this... This scenario probably would have been a better idea to just attack in. Good game. 
I would love to know why they say good game. Uh, we'll go ahead. Put up an oil counter. Opponent, quite the emoter. I won't mute them this game. Let's see what they're up for. Mm-hmm. That's like a cock or cock a pony scamp. <laughs> Quite the ponderer. That's fair enough, you know. Sometimes you have to do some thinking. I respect that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that emote. They're feeling pretty controlling this game. I respect their... Uh, I'm just gonna let that through. Uh, let's go ahead and play Urbrass Forge. They have two blues, so they could negate it. Or make disappear. That, that does work. Bank Buster for card draw. So they're tapped out here. Now we kill them. This is where you fucked up, sir. This is where you fucked up. Uh, we could have played the Vindictive Flamestoker first here, but I don't even really want to play the Vindictive Flamestoker because I'm afraid they're going to kill it. Okay, that's a bit idiotic on my part to think that they're going to kill it, but still. Um, yeah, we'll hold up the one mana. This is a good idea because then we can proliferate with Canker Bloom if they go for the removal on it. Or we can kill their Reckoner Bank Buster if they go for the removal on it. My turn. Um... I don't know what to do. Fusing. We potentially have lethal here. Because we can kill them at end of turn. Were they just good gaming because they didn't draw into anything? I'm so confused. I, the amount of emoting is, is driving me up a wall, I'm not going to lie. Dissolve. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. One, two. Done. Boom. And that is part of the synergy here, is uh, fusing when things die. Believe it or not, the Fusling works really well with the Forge. <laughs> I wonder why they named <laughs> them like this. But this says whenever an, uh, another creature or artifact you control is put into the graveyard from battlefield, put an oil counter on it. Tokens technically go to the graveyard before they are like removed from the game. Uh, so the tokens from Urbrass Forge continue to pump up Fusling, as well as the tokens from Urbrass Forge can help to grow the evolving adaptive uh, because it's an enter the battlefield trigger for the evolving adaptive so the the forge keeps growing keeping putting out these bigger and bigger creatures and it will also grow your evolving adaptive our opponent here i guess they just had a terrible draw uh i don't know what i don't know uh why they didn't i i don't know <laughs> they confused me to say the least Probably should have just needed them. Let's see. Shieldred Avatar. I wonder if they're playing mono black. Uh, the Evolving Adaptive is dead in hand. But we got Cockapony Scamp. And Vindictive Flamestoker. We do play first, which is, I guess, a pretty good win in an aggro deck, right? So... That's something. We could have played the Vindictive Flame Circuit here so they could play the Filigree Silex next and get an oil counter. So this might be a misplay, but I figure if they're going to remove it, it's better that they remove the Scamp than the Vindictive Flame Stoker. And then that's another reason to just go ahead and play the Filigree Silex here rather than playing uh, anything else. Yep, that's a cool part of the, the Cockphony Scamp. They have the cut down, like I was thinking. Opponent was checking if we'd play a better creature, so we didn't. 
Sometimes just knowing your matchup and knowing how to play into it can be a, a big help. Alright, we'll go ahead and play Evolving Adaptive here, I think. Our opponent is playing red and black, so that is a bit spooky. We'll play this Vindictive Flame Stoker. If they go for the kill on the Evolving Adaptive, we can pump it with Free from Flesh, which is actually kind of huge. We can also do that on the Vindictive Flame Stoker. Um, I don't know if our opponent is aware, but it is a trick. If they're going to cut down something, we have a response to it. So this pumps it up and cut down cares about power and toughness. Well, Infernal Grasp does not, but they take damage here, which is pretty huge for us. Please do not be playing a billion flesh quarters. Those are really hard to get through. As well as a Glissa might provide some problems because of first striking nonsense. Our opponent probably not playing any counter spells in black and red, but they might be playing artifact and enchantment removal. But they're going to have to choose between the Silex or the, the Forge. So that is up to them to decide. We did go shields down on the removal uh, for our creature, but... Opponent has the responses. Three removal spells. Can we survive? They have the or artifact removal, which is pretty uh, pretty uncommon. And they got rid of one of our better, like, plans here, which is, um, the Forge. It puts in a ton of work against these more controlling matchups. So it just pumps out these hasty creatures that Planeswalkers and whatnot cannot deal with. Opponent, Sokazans here. Interesting. Sokazan, Crucible of Defiance. We did play one of those of our own. Might want to play another copy of those. Opponent... Gives up. I don't know what they're up to. Maybe they're just playing their missions to kill creatures, and so they... I, maybe? I don't think that's it. I, it beats me. Maybe they're just holding, like, a handful of Raskas. Because Raskas is, like, 5 mana if you complete it. 6 mana if you don't. Uh, so, they didn't have anything to play, but still... Yeah, Vraskas would be probably a pretty bad card to be holding in hand. I don't know what they were playing though. Like feels like they, they didn't need to surrender there. We got two duels. It's great. We have the Copperline Gorge, which is a really nice card from Frexia All Will Be One. Uh, because well it's a uh, it enters untapped if you have two or fewer lands. Works really well with this <clears throat> works really well with this whole I'm gonna beat you down as fast as humanly possible strategy. Our opponent probably doesn't have any cool responses here, so we're going to go ahead and cast Freed from Flesh on this to get some massive damage. Gives it oil counters, which buffs its power, and then it gives it also a power buff. Huge uh, spell on Evolving Adaptive. So now our Evolving Adaptive is a poor four on turn two. Pretty hard to remove in most situations. Opponent has the Drown in Icker, so it looks like we're playing against Azit. Abzan Toxic. Will we be able to get around it? Uh, do we play another Vindictive Flame Stoker? I think we do. Uh, just to keep up some sort of board presence. And if we play it first, we get oil counters from playing our Silex. And our Silex will help us kill the opponent here in a handful of turns. If they stick around. Keyword if. They're playing some... Impressive control here. Do not a huge fan of Skrull's Hive because that can start giving things. I can start giving things lifelink. That is a huge problem. I played against an opponent that had three Skrull's Hives and I was like, "You're an idiot for playing them all out." And then suddenly, like very easily, they all had lifelink and I was screwed. All right. And we draw into something relevant here. If we draw into a forge, that would be really good. Opponent making us sacrifice a creature. That is not good. They give us a poison counter. That's also very bad because they're approaching. Uh, you know what we'll do? We'll do this. No scrolls high for you. Get the hell out of here. I think that's worth. My card is too freaking crazy. Does put us shields down in terms of 
uh, our vindictive flame sticker, we might have been able to uh, we might have been able to filter for more cards. So possibly a punt here. I did want to get rid of it super fast though, because I don't want our opponent gaining life. Though it would have been really smart to get a vindictive flame sticker draw off before our opponent finds a removal spell for us. They're gonna proliferate with their thirsting roots. Scrub's Hive. Nope. Takanuma. What creature are they going to return? Oh, Slaughter Stinger. Nice. Unfortunately, that's not going to do much from here. Uh, here. Uh, we're going to go tick up this. Ah, uh, this is tough. Because we can pump this. We'll, we'll do this. Alright. This is a bit of a gamble here. Oil counters. Now we get to get a free new hand. By free, I mean one mana. And then we can potentially cast things in our second main forge. That will pretty do pretty good here. Though maybe we play the Cockphony Scamp. Play a mountain. Oh, wait, we can play both. Alright, cool. Oi, oi, oi. Probably won't be blocking this might here. We just need to hope they don't draw a Skrull's Hive. If they draw a Skrull's Hive here, we are pretty screwed. I'm fine with the Slaughter Singer. You can try and beat us down and poison us out. I do not care. Uh, go ahead, no blocks. Because what we're going to do here is instead... Instead, we're going to go ahead and swing in. I think I'm going to keep the filigree silex here. We could use it to detonate on their slaughter singer and then detonate this one on their token. But it seems kind of excessive. Um, especially when we have potential uh, kill here coming up. So we're going to get a bunch of oil counters. Uh, presumably. If our opponent chooses to block the cockphony scamp, they lose their slaughter singer. Yep, they're not the brightest. It happens. Yep, yeah, that, that'll do. I don't know, actually. How is this supposed to be pronounced? Cacophony? <laughs> Cacophony. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very small. All right. Um, in that case, maybe we go ahead and detonate the filigree silex in response. Um, I think that's fine. And then play another one. Should have lethal coming up here very shortly. <clears throat> well, lethal as soon as next turn. Drown an Icker. That is a problem. We ticked up our filigree Silex here, so we're all in, in this forge and the Silex. Can we kill the opponent before they kill us? That is not a bad draw. That is quite a not a bad draw. I will go ahead and hold this up until the end of their turn. Opponent's looking pretty dead from here. Though if they have another Drown Nicker, I'm going to drown myself. No. But geez, that, that spell is brutal. I've seen it too many times and it's been irritating. Opponent, they do get a blocker here. We could blow up. Ooh. That is a bit of a problem. Uh, but we could detonate our Skrull's Hive on two to get rid of it. Or our Silex on two to get rid of it. Uh, our following turn. We just need to remember to take up our Silex on our turn. Go ahead, give us the poison. Feels good. We get the game one life here, but I don't think it's going to matter. If we take this up, yep, my turn, oh, that also works, uh, we can, there's, how many ways of winning, there's probably a lot of ways of winning, we're gonna go ahead, play this, uh, we'll use, oh, wait, that was kind of, whatever, uh, we'll go ahead, proliferate, we just need to be careful when we're choosing our proliferates, because we don't want to, Clip right this, go ahead, detonate this. 
Boom, boom, boom. No life gain for you. That's two four fours with trample. You're not gonna be doing much about that. Yep. Pack it on up. Pack it on up. I'm trying to think, did we play? I think yeah, we did pop a vindictive flamestarker there. This deck just tempo, tempo, tempo. Crazy. I mean, yeah, they print a bunch of cards that are designed to work well together, and well, they work well together. We'll go ahead here and play one more game just for the extra demonstration. See if we can rank up one more pip. Uh, ooh, this card. I love this art for this card, and this card is pretty good. I, I think I'll be releasing a video tomorrow, uh, maybe, with that card in it. This is a decent keep. We got a bunch of Freed from Flesh here, which is not ideal, because that means we're pretty all in on this Fusling. So, we kind of need... Opponent... Okay. That's good for us. We'll go ahead... Swing in. Cast a Freed from Flesh on it. And, well, we could have cast the other one. Yeah, that's fine. They might try and go cut down on it, and then we can get them. Mm, tenacious Underdog. And that works as well. My turn. Ooh, Forge. Forge, Forge, Forge. Forge, Forge, Forge. Uh, do we want to trade with our underdog? I don't think we do, actually. Yeah, because then we can potentially pop off with the filigree silex to finish them off. I think that's the right move. Maybe I'm trolling. Okay, I was trolling. I was trolling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have offended you, Liliana. I'm sorry. Ah, I forgot what Mono Black plays. That's a bit my fault. Can I just play Bloody Contaminator? Get this going. Boom. Your Liliana does not stick. So if they have another Liliana, I start crying. But we do have Forge going here. And they're playing black. They don't have any artifact removal. Uh, so. Well, that's a lie. There is, like, two cards. I swear to Jesus. Something suspicious is going on. Yeah, something suspicious is going on, Liliana. It is kind of sus. It is kind of sus what's going on here. <clears throat> Opponent goes ahead and swings in, which is kind of strange if you ask me, but we get another forge going. So we get to a swing in to their face with one of these, and then this one and then finish off the Lilion with this one uh burn burn black burn in the forges nothing more yep opponent they got quite the clock uh we got quite the clock on our opponent don't think they have double artifact removal graveyard trespasser that does pose a bit of a threat um especially since it's three mana so we can't go play the solix and get rid of it and then this says destroy, so we don't ever exile their tenacious underdog here. But I think we have a, the faster kill here, especially with this freed from flesh. Ooh, that is a good card for this. Go ahead, play this. Play this. Honestly, we have a kill next turn, I think. Honestly, I think we do. There you go, evolving adaptive, getting real thick. Real thick. Hmm. Sure about that opponent? Wait a minute. Did I punt? We had kill this turn. We had to kill this turn. Ah, okay. Well, I tapped the filigree silex just instinctively. And if we didn't, we would have played free from flesh on evolving adaptive. And then we would have been able to tap it, deal 10 damage to their face. So if we'd lose here... It's my fault. I'm sorry to disappoint you all. 
They could play... Yeah, that's a pretty good answer, but... Not good enough, sir. I'm sorry, just not good enough. Go ahead, kill him on our upkeep. Kill him on our upkeep. Yeah, hit us. Hit us. Hit us. Come on now. Hit me. Hit me. My turn. Boom. Yep, resolve. Boom. And one from you. One from you. One, two from you. One, two, three, four from you. One, two, three. Boom. You're gone. The Silex coming in here to steal the win. Well, give us the win that we <laughs> were pretty much set up to get. This deck is brutal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. We'll go hop into a full deck tech, talk about each individual card, and maybe some changes that you can make to it. <clears throat> and keep in mind, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, uh, helps the video a ton, and then also consider subscribing because hope to make a bunch more videos on this set. Uh, and also just videos on Magic Ar uh, Arena. It's a fun game. All right, so we have 20 lands here, right? We have 24 creatures, 20 lands, 12 artifacts, for instance. Kind of the breakdown of the spells, our artifacts are the Silex, the Churning Reservoir, the Urgrass Forge, and then we got all these these juicy creatures. I'll put the creatures and artifacts in separate files, kind of. Um, so Cacophony Scamp, or Cacophony Scamp. <laughs> Sorry for all of you had to endure that the entire video. Probably kind of annoying, right? Um, but it deals one damage, or it's a nice 1-1 one, one that has some upside that works, synergizes pretty well with this deck. Opponents don't always pay attention to the fact that it dies and it deals damage to its power to any target. Uh, so that's really nice. Also works really well when there's just... They have that little, like, special creature that they don't want to ever attack in with or ever block with. Well, Cacophony Scamp, or Cacophony Scamp, uh, means that if it ever dies and they have that Gallic Readers with no counters on it, you, you kill it. Uh, or if they have that, like, um, I'm trying to think of a 2-1. Uh, oh, there's a good one. What is it called? When you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one soldier. Okay, I can't think of good examples off the top of my head, but it's really good for getting in the damage to the face or finishing off a, like, two toughness creature or just pinging something that they never want to block with. Um, so this, I think this card always has a lot of upside. You can also pump it with Freed from Flesh so that when it dies, it deals three damage. Uh, which is pretty nice, because then you can send 3 damage to wherever the opponent doesn't want it. Um, and then we got the Fusling. This card works really well, because it's got the Trample, right? Uh, but on top of that, uh, and on top of the fact it gets plus 1 for each oil counter, and the fact that uh, the real nice factor is, like, whenever something goes to the grave, you get an oil counter in it, which works really, really, really well with the Forge. Uh, works well with Vindictive Flame Stoker if we ever sack it. Anchor Bloom, also a real nice tool in this deck. Gets rid of those pesky things. We can just proliferate to get ourselves up to a Silex kill, um, which is nice. Um, it also sacks itself, so it works well with the fusing, right? Freed from, uh, free from Flesh, this is a really nice combat spell because, well, often the opponent won't expect it. Um, that's the thing about combat tricks is uh, people often aren't used to playing into them, so if if this starts getting played a lot, maybe it'll be dropped down in value, but the fact that it adds oil counters to things works really well with Evolving Adaptive, <clears throat> as well as the Fusling, uh, can be helpful with the Vindictive Flame Stoker for like blocking, uh, and then using it as the sack feature, so real nice synergies there. Uh, and we want as many oil counters going around again for that Silex. 10 extra damage helps us finish out those games before the opponent can find any sort of answers to our board. Uh, heck, we had a kill there, and we didn't even re realize it with our uh, Apollo Adaptive getting pumped up twice by our Urbrass Forge. Uh, so we made a little mistake there. I had to kill them on the upkeep. Well, didn't have to, but we did it for style points. Um, and yeah, so... Moving on to the next card, we got Vindictive Flame Stoker. 
uh, which is a real nice card in this deck because, well, it's got two toughness, so it works well with Evolving, evolving Adaptive. Gets oil counters when we cast non-creature spells. Well, we have 12 of them here. The Churning Reservoir, the Filigree Silex, and the Urbrass Forge. Um, so you can get oil counters on it relatively easy. Um, it, well, it'll get a few oil counters over the course. Oh, we also have free from flesh. So I guess we have uh, 16 non-creature spells to put oil counters on this with. As well as this puts oil counters, two oil counters on it. It gets a discount. You can pay seven mana or six generic, one red. Discard your hand and then draw four cards. This ability costs one less for each oil counter on it. So that's how we're able to actually get this spell. <clears throat> that's how we're actually able to use this ability here. And then we have Evolving Adaptive, which I sort of already covered in detail. It's part of the reason we're playing green here, besides our Canker Bloom and our Bloated Contaminator. Didn't really get to see the Bloated Contaminator getting in there like we wanted to, but hey, um, it ate up a fair amount of removal, <laughs> didn't it? It ate up a ton of removal, um, which is, I mean, I guess good in this deck. We want our opponent not killing our Vindictive Flamestoker is probably one of the big ones. We care a little less we really don't care about um, them killing our cacophony, our cacophony, <laughs> cacophony scamp. Um, exuberant fusing and these ones, were, we kind of want these to strive to some degree, but Vindictive Flame Server is definitely the one where you might want to hold off playing it, or you play Evolving Adaptive first and then a Vindictive Flame Stoker, and then the Evolving Adaptive looks a little bit more like a bigger threat because it's now a 2 2, and your opponent's like, hmm. I don't know what you played that turn, but I know what I want to kill. <laughs> they already have set their eyes. They're like, I don't know what it is, but I want to break it. What What is that from? Uh, oh no, I think I know what that's from. There's some YouTube video that I've watched. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> your opponents will definitely start looking at your evolving adaptive more than your vindictive flame stoker. Turning reservoir here puts a lot of value in if you have other things on board. Uh. Don't really recommend playing it out turn one because you really don't get any value from it. You want to be able to play the, one of the, our creatures turn one to swing in. Uh, just so that we can start getting in some chip damage. And then this is a nice turn two play. Uh, because then you can start pumping up your evolving adaptive, your exuberant fusling. Or fu yeah, fu fusling. Um, and, th and that's nice. Um... It also has this nice ability, which I think we missed during one of our games, where... Or no, I don't think we actually missed during uh, this recording session, but you have to keep an eye on the fact that it has a second ability, which can come in handy, and it can make or break the games, um, that says, pay to create, tap it, create a 1-1 one, one red Frexine Goblin creature token, activate only if an oil uh, oil counter was removed from a permanent you controlled this turn, or a permanent with an oil counter on it was put in a graveyard this turn. So you can only do this if you have like your, uh, the opponent kills something. You can do this on the opponent's turn. So if you have mana up um, and they remove something, you, you gotta keep an eye on these things. Um, you can potentially get yourself an additional one one and hey, we're, we're eking out every damage we can uh, because we don't wanna see what our opponent has as their four Four drops, they're five drops, they're six drops. I don't care if you have a farewell, because I want to say farewell to you before you ever get to play it. <laughs> um, Canker Bloom here uh, is really nice because the proliferate option on top of the artifact and enchantment option. Also, it's a 3 2. It's a really nice body to go in, get some beats in, trade with some things, or it also, when it comes down, can pump up your Evolving Adaptive because it's got three power. Uh, you play your Evolving Adaptive, you play your Vindictive Flamestarter, which pumps it up to a 2-2. You play your Canker Bloom, it pumps it up to a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, your Evolving Adaptive starts looking pretty juicy there. Then you got the Filigree Silex here. Want to try and get this out if you can um, relatively early so you can start cranking out those oil counters. Uh, because eventually, before you know it, and before the opponent knows it, there's going to be 10 oil counters on things, and you just blast them out of the game, which is really, really nice. Uh, also, this, you want to be thinking about what your opponent's playing. 
uh, because you can potentially also use it as a sweeper slash removal. It's not really a sweeper, uh, but I've used filigree silex against mono red decks, um, and it and it, it's kind of nice because you play the opponent plays their one drop, they swing in get you uh, the opponent, and you play like you play a mountain and then you play a training reservoir. The opponent plays another one drop and then another one drop, uh, and then like hits you in the face. And you play your filigree silex. You pass to the opponent. They play another one drop, and like a lightning strike you in the face or something, and then they swing in. Um, you uh, and then next turn, your churning reservoir puts an oil counter on your filigree silex. You tap it and you sacrifice it, and the opponent loses basically all of their board presence. They probably have gone down like one, two, three, four five cards roughly um so you've played two cards the opponent's played five cards you just sweeper it and the opponent's probably crying to some degree um though i will say one thing important here turning reservoir it says at the beginning of your upkeep put an oil counter on another target non-token artifact or creature you control it is not an option this is not optional uh so this is very important if you play out a filigree silex and you only have a turning reservoir out or if you have a turning reservoir and only a filigree silex it will put that oil counter on the filigree silex so if you're planning to use this as a sweeper think of this i because i was versing a mono red deck and i screwed it up i played turning reservoir i played filigree silex i tapped the filigree silex the opponent played a bunch of more one drops at the beginning of my upkeep, the Turning Reservoir immediately activated, placing another oil counter on the Filigree Silex. And it was two oil counters, and the opponent had like three one drops. And I can't I can't remove an oil counter. And uh, the opponent <laughs> let's just say I lost that game. So very important tech there uh, to keep an eye on. But Turning Reservoir, you're mainly gonna be putting it on like Evolving Adaptive, Exuberant Fusling, and then lastly, Urabras Forge card is a beast i think i've realized that over the the past uh many games that this card it's got that special power of just being inevitable you know your opponent like okay whatever the urbress forge puts out a 1-1 one, one. whatever the urbress forge puts out a 2-2 two, two. whatever okay the urbress forge is putting out a 3-3 three, three. uh okay it's putting out a 4-4 four, four? okay and then suddenly they're losing a fourth of their health uh or more than a fourth of their health every single turn and things are rapidly declining because well it it, it gets out of hand especially with the turning reservoir because well it puts out a one one and then next turn it puts out a three three and the next turn it puts out a five five and then next or not a five five a five one and then it puts out a seven one and then oh my goodness uh you're going to be able to swing into whatever Planeswalkers they play. And then it's a, it's a pesky artifact. That's the biggest thing is all these things are over here. These are creatures. All of these cards over here are creatures. Uh, and so the opponent can get rid of all these creatures. But if this thing is still pumping out hasty creatures. And they don't have a way to remove it. It will kill them. Um, so that's the, that's the trick. And then the other trick is well hey. If, if this gets a bunch of oil counters, which it gets an oil counter every single turn, that speeds up your Silex, or your Silex kill, uh, which is very nice. And then lastly, a Bloated Contaminator as another curve topper here. It's a 4-4, four four, so it's really good at blocking if your opponent wants to ever block. It's also in the, the last thing that we can use to pump up our Evolving Adaptive here, besides the for, Forge tokens. Um, and then it's got Trample, and then whenever it actually connects with the opponent, we proliferate, which, well, let's just say we have a few oil counters, right? So, <laughs> works out really well. And in terms of the lands, it is really important that you have as many dual lands and untapped lands as you can. Um, honestly, I would almost swap out, like, these forests for dual lands, uh, just so that you dueled, like, dual tap lands, uh, just so that you actually have, like, a way of... Uh, like 
sorry, uh, just so that you have like more ways to like play out your hands. Because if you have to mulligan because you don't have the right mana, that feels really bad. Um, it's almost better to not have to like mulligan so you can play out with maximum like hand. Uh, so I, I would almost, that is like maybe one change that I would make. Uh, besides that, we have one Besaju here, which is nice because it can do things that Filigree Salix might struggle to do uh, at the same speed. And then we have a Sokazun because, well, two extra tokens can also finish out games where the opponent farewells and has two life or something, right? Uh, that would be like the dream play. And then we have the, the forest here, which are untapped lands. We don't really care if these deal damage to us because... We figure in most situations, our opponent is not going to be able to keep up with us in a race. Uh, so we're going to be readily bleeding them out. Uh, so we don't really mind, like, one damage here or there. Uh, a bit of a problem when you play against burn decks, but besides that, I mean, if you tap smart, you do have uh, some... You have at least 12 cards that that don't actually use... Uh, or that have some generic mana symbols, so you can use these for your generic mana in some situations. So that's going to be it for the deck. I hope you really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It's really strong, uh, surprisingly strong. Uh, so let me know how it treats you in the ladder uh, and what opponents you face that give you trouble perhaps or what you might change about this deck because I think Gruul Aggro is probably the best option. Well, one of the best options for green. Uh, besides that, I think green and black if you're playing, trying to go for a little more grindy uh, games plan, is a also solid color combination for green. Also, Simic's reasonably strong. Um, and Selesnya, you got the whole like token nonsense. Uh, but if you're trying to go, go for tokens and you want to actually play your big green creatures, you're probably going to go want to go uh, green and black. If you want to beat your opponent out and super speed, you got the your gruel, your red and green, and then you got your your blue and green for if you want to play your big threats and try and ramp, right? Um, Simic's got that whole like value engine, but I think Simic might not be enough. Uh, just because uh, you don't have a good enough removal. Blue, you're relying on counter spells and bounce spells. And then white and green is a pretty strong color comp combination because then you have access to wipes removal and card draw and tokens uh, so yeah and lords white's got a decent number of like lords in a way if you're playing like soldiers anyways i'll stop jibber, jibber jabbering and uh have a nice morning evening night afternoon whenever and wherever you're watching ciao